Imagine you are on vacation, walking through a park or near a temple in a beautiful, exotic location. A monkey, bold and curious, approaches you, but then its behavior changes. It bares its teeth, hisses, and lunges. In that terrifying moment, one word flashes through your mind, rabies. It is a primal fear, a disease that has haunted humanity for centuries. But is that fear justified? Can monkeys get rabies? And if so, how great is the danger? Really, the truth about this deadly virus and our primate cousins is a surprising story of low risk, high stakes, and crucial knowledge for both our safety and theirs. Before we uncover the facts, if you believe in understanding and protecting the world's primates, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel, Monkeylo, and remember to like and share this video. Your support helps us tackle these important topics and spread vital awareness. Now, let's explore the complex relationship between monkeys and the rabies virus. Let's start with the most direct question. Can a monkey be infected by rabies? The answer is an unequivocal, yes. Rabies is caused by a virus that can infect any mammal, and monkeys are no exception. If a monkey is bitten by a rabid animal, it can contract the disease. And once the symptoms appear, it is just as fatal for them as it is for a human or any other creature. There is no cure, but here is the first and most important twist in this story. Despite being susceptible to the virus, the actual rate of rabies in wild monkey populations is incredibly low. In fact, it is so rare that in many parts of the world, you are far more likely to be exposed to rabies from a stray dog, a bat, a raccoon, or a fox than you are from a monkey. This seems contradictory if they can get it, and it is so deadly, why is it not more common? The answer lies in a combination of biology, behavior, and bad luck. The first reason is that monkeys are not a natural reservoir for the virus. A reservoir species, like bats in many regions, is an animal population where the rabies virus circulates continuously. It is always present. Monkeys, on the other hand, are typically what scientists call a dead-end host or an accidental host. They do not sustain the virus within their own troops. They get it from another type of animal, but they are not very good at passing it on to other monkeys. This leads to the second reason for its rarity. Think about how a monkey would get rabies in the first place. The most common way would be through a bite from a rabid carnivore, like a feral dog or a mongoose. Now, imagine a small monkey being attacked by a rabid dog. The monkey's chances of surviving that encounter are extremely low. The predator that gives it the rabies virus is very likely to kill it in the same attack. The monkey often dies from its injuries long before the rabies virus has time to incubate and make it infectious. It is a grim reality, but it means the chain of transmission is often broken before it can even begin. And what if the monkey does survive the initial attack and becomes infected? This is where the troop's social dynamics come into play. A monkey with rabies will start to behave very erratically. Its troop mates, who are experts at reading social cues, will recognize that something is deeply wrong. A sick and unpredictable monkey is a danger to the group. In most cases, the troop will aggressively drive the sick individual away. The infected monkey becomes an outcast, and this social isolation prevents it from biting and spreading the virus to its own kind. So what should you look for? What are the symptoms of a rabid monkey? The disease typically manifests in one of two ways. The first is the one we all picture, the furious form. A monkey with furious rabies will be extremely aggressive and lose all fear of humans or other animals. It may bite and scratch at anything, even inanimate objects. It might seem disoriented, struggle to move properly, and drool excessively because the muscles in its throat are beginning to become paralyzed. But there is another form of rabies, which is actually more common in many animals. It is the dumb or paralytic form. A monkey with this type of rabies might not be aggressive at all. Instead, it will appear lethargic, weak, and depressed. 
it might seem partially paralyzed, often starting in the hind legs, causing it to drag itself along the ground. It might have a slack jaw and a dazed, confused expression. This form is just as dangerous, but it can be deceptive because the animal does not fit our stereotype of a rabid creature. It is absolutely critical to remember this. You cannot, under any circumstances, diagnose rabies just by looking at a monkey. Aggression in monkeys, especially in tourist areas, is most often caused by humans feeding them. They become demanding and lose their natural fear. An aggressive monkey is far more likely to be a fed monkey than a rabid one. The only way to confirm a rabies diagnosis is with a laboratory test on the animal's brain tissue after it has died. Therefore, you must treat every wild monkey as a potential risk. So, how do you stay safe? The single most important rule is to maintain a safe and respectful distance. Never, ever feed a wild monkey. Feeding wild animals is the root cause of almost all negative human. Monkey interactions. It teaches them that humans are a walking vending machine. And when the food does not come, they can become demanding and aggressive. By not feeding them, you are protecting both yourself and the monkeys. You can also make the environment less inviting for close encounters. If you live or are staying in an area with a local monkey population, make sure trash cans are securely sealed. Do not leave food outdoors unattended. Monkeys are brilliant opportunists, and if they learn your home is a source of easy food, they will keep coming back increasing the chances of a dangerous interaction. But what if the worst happens? What if you are bitten or scratched by a monkey? The medical advice is clear and non-negotiable. You must assume you have been exposed to the rabies virus. First, immediately and thoroughly wash the wound with soap and water for at least 15 minutes. This simple act can significantly reduce the number of viral particles. Second, seek medical attention immediately you will need to start a course of treatment called post-exposure prophylaxis, or PEP. This involves a series of vaccine shots. If started promptly after the exposure, this treatment is nearly 100% effective at preventing rabies. The risk is low, but the stakes are life and death, so you must always act. So if the risk to humans is manageable with caution and good sense, what about the monkeys themselves? How can we help protect them from this awful disease? The most effective strategy has nothing to do with the monkeys. It has to do with the animals that infect them. In many parts of Asia and Africa, the biggest rabies threat to both humans and wildlife comes from stray and feral dog populations. Therefore, the single best way to protect monkeys from rabies is to support widespread, systematic dog vaccination and population management programs. By creating a firewall of vaccinated dogs, we can prevent the virus from ever reaching the monkey population. In some parts of the world, scientists have had great success using oral rabies vaccines, or ORV, to protect wildlife like raccoons and coyotes. These are baits laced with the rabies vaccine that are distributed in the environment. Developing an effective and safe ORV bait that is attractive to monkeys is a complex challenge. But it is an area of active research that could one day provide another powerful tool to protect them. Finally, we must remember that a bite from a monkey carries other dangers besides rabies. Their mouths are full of bacteria that can cause very serious infections in humans. And some species, particularly macaques, can carry the herpes B virus. While this virus is often mild or asymptomatic in them, it can be extremely dangerous and even fatal. To humans, this is yet another powerful reason to admire these incredible animals from a distance. In the end, the story of monkeys and rabies is a story of nuance. Yes, they can get it, but no, it is not common. The fear we feel often outweighs the actual statistical risk, but the severity of the disease means we must always err on the side of caution. The path to a safe coexistence is not through fear but through understanding. By not feeding wild monkeys, by managing the animal populations we live alongside, and by respecting their space, we can keep ourselves safe and ensure that this rare threat to our primate cousins becomes even rarer. 
If you found this video informative and important, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us to continue growing and to bring more of these vital topics to you. And please, tell us in the comments what you would like to learn about next. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.